Hey there guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Now, you might have noticed that the 1980s are really hot right now. 80s aesthetic and 80s trends are all the rage and have been for the past couple of years. It's a lot of uh, media, a lot of products that are emulating 1980s uh, styles. It's all cashing in on that nostalgia card. And today we're looking at a product that does just that. Today we're looking at the Durgod Fusion Mechanical Keyboard. Now, Durgod is a company that you may have heard of before. They are quite well regarded in the mechanical keyboard space for making very well-built, generally fairly no-nonsense kinds of keyboards uh, with high-quality materials. Surprisingly, I have not reviewed a Durgod keyboard on the channel here before. I don't know why, it just hasn't happened yet. But today, finally, I'm rectifying that situation. And the Fusion is a very exciting keyboard, at least to me, because I was a kid in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And so I am the target audience, the prime audience, for this particular kind of nostalgia. The Durgod Fusion is designed to look like classic 1980s consoles and it has all kinds of elements that are intended to evoke the feeling of classic consoles like the NES uh, and as you'll see uh, when we get into the unboxing the particular colorway for the Durgod Fusion that I have here is in fact uh, inspired directly by the NES with uh, lovely gray and red and black accents. So that's something to look forward to in just a moment, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, the Durgod Fusion isn't just about the retro design, it's also got some modern niceties. It's got a compact 65% layout, which is very much like a 60% layout, but has an extra row of keys on the right hand side of the board so that you get some of the nav cluster functionality as physical keys, which is always a nice thing to have. It's also got quite a lot of connectivity options. It can be wired via USB Type-C. It also has 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity via an included USB dongle and Bluetooth functionality with the ability to switch on the fly between multiple devices. So uh, despite the retro aesthetic, it's got these modern features. It comes equipped with uh, Cherry MX switches, uh, Cherry profile keycaps, uh, and overall it just looks like a really interesting package. So I'm very keen to take a look at it, although I will admit <laughs> that I'm mostly attracted by that gorgeous retro aesthetic that it's got. But perhaps there's more to it than that. Uh, the Durgod Fusion is currently in the Kickstarter phase, so uh, as of the time of recording, uh, you can click through on the link down in the video description to pledge to Dear God's Kickstarter for the Fusion. Uh, the very earliest early bird uh, uh, options are no longer available, they are of limited number and they're sold out, uh, but the early bird pricing of 110 US dollars is still available as of the time of recording. Uh, the way that they've got it listed there implies that after the Kickstarter, the MSRP, the full price, will be 200 US dollars. Whether that is actually the case or not, we'll have to see. I have my doubts, given that uh, really they want to try and make you feel like you're getting a really good deal when you back the Kickstarter as an early bird uh, backer. So, But nonetheless, the discount that they're citing for the early bird pricing implies that the MSRP will be 200 after the Kickstarter. Um, of course, I'm looking at a fairly early production model here. 
Uh, so it's possible that a few things may change between what you see here and the final product, but as far as I know, what we're unboxing here today is going to be representative of the mass-produced model that will be going out to Kickstarter backers. So, uh, of course, Durgod was kind enough to send over this early production model for us to take a look at. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the retrotastic Durgod Fusion. And here we have the Durgod Fusion in box, such as it is. Uh, this is without a doubt the plainest looking box for a keyboard I've ever seen, and I suspect that this is not final retail packaging, because uh, ostensibly this is still uh, in the Kickstarter phase, so uh, this is very much pre-release product. Um, and bear in mind that that applies to the hardware itself. Uh, what we see in here might not be 100% representative of the final retail product, but I bet it'll be pretty darn close. A lot of times Kickstarters these days are are more um, a, f a formalism than anything. <laughs> like they're there to to generate interest and to take pre-orders in a way. Um, but, you know, as we'll see when we open this up, I'm sure, you know, there's basically a complete product already. The R&D has happened. Uh, so, anyway, uh, we have a very, very basic box. <laughs> Nothing anywhere except for on the spine here where we have a sticker gives us a little bit of information. It says Durgod Fusion, so we do have some branding on there. Uh, it lets us know that it is the Steam colorway, they call it, which is gray, black, and red, uh, which you'll see in a moment has this pretty cool retro aesthetic. Uh, it has Cherry MX Brown switches as evidenced by the writing there, and also by the sticker here. A couple serial codes, barcodes, and that's, that's it. That's all we got, so. Let's open this up. I, I will admit, I did, uh, I uh, took a peek inside very, very briefly. I have not taken the board out or anything, but I I wanted to see it. I wanted to know. This is... There we go. Knew there was a way in. jumps out to me here, uh, as a little different, is this right here. I'm pretty sure, you guys, I'm pretty sure this is a Durgod coaster, which is maybe one of the strangest pack-ins I've ever received with a keyboard. Uh, I'm not positive though, so let's just... It is a coaster. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a coaster. It says Durgod on it. It has a stitched uh, hem, or whatever you call that, border. And it's made of mouse pad material, you guys. It says right here on the back, not for sale. 
use Durgod's specific type of mouse pad material and technology. Evidently, this has a, a model number, is the Durgod C300S. <laughs> what a weird pack-in, guys. What a strange thing. And never before have I, have I seen a, a mouse pad material coaster included with the keyboard. But you know what? I'm into it. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's weird in a good way. Uh, I have no idea if that will ship with the retail or final versions of this product. Uh, so, I can't promise that you'll get one. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Okay, so we've got a product manual here, which suggests that really this product is fully developed. It's as I said, the Kickstarter the Kickstarter is a, a formality more than anything. The Dear God Fusion Quick Start Guide. Public beta version. Okay, so they do acknowledge that this is a, a beta version of the product. So it's pretty straightforward. We have here overview of Bluetooth connectivity, uh, how you do that. Also the 2.4 gigahertz USB connection. It's really cool that this thing has both. I've used a few other keyboards in past, reviewed a few others that had both Bluetooth and the, the 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Uh, the Drivo um, Blade Master Pro comes to mind. Uh, So that's kind of that, and that, that's it actually. Hmm. Doesn't say anything else. Well, okay then. Put that aside, and let's check this puppy out. So we have a conventional dust cover. branding on it. Right up top there. And then we've got the keyboard, which is sort of just nestled in between these pieces of cardboard that honestly don't look like they afford that much protection in shipping. It's no nice foam or anything, but uh, again, I don't know if this is final packaging, so... Keyboard comes in this soft touch plastic bag. Uh, we'll get to it in just a second. I know I'm such a tease. I'm such a tease, aren't I? But uh, presumably there's a USB cable or something in here as well. Uh, we've got a standalone box, which means we can move this out of the way. Make some space. One very long box. Uh, I guess we just open it from the end. And inside we have, ah uh, yes, the desiccant. make nice sounds, don't they? <laughs> Only in an ASMR video, right? Oh, very nice. We've got a Durgod branded keycap puller. It is of the high quality wire type which I seem to be seeing more commonly. I, th I think there's a trend towards including these with keyboards these days. 
which is nice. It's way better than the sort of half circle polar type, which has a tendency to scuff and scratch your switches or your your caps, pardon me. It does have the Durgod branding on it. Good. Good. And then what's all this? This looks like a a Durgod sticker. <laughs> is a little bit worse for wear, but uh, there it is. It's been a little bit munched. And uh, a Velcro cable wrap, cable tie, which I guess you can use with the USB cable, which is presumably still in here. Fascinating. Uh, nothing else in there. That's it. But, um, dear God, has seen fit to provide us with not one, but two USB cables, actually. One is the typical USB-A uh, on one end to USB-C, because this uses a USB Type-C connector, this keyboard. Uh, and that's your standard USB cable these days. Uh, you can see that it's actually got Durgod branding on the housing for the USB-A end of things. And we've got the little logo there. And it's actually on the USB Type-C end too. It says Durgod there. Always a nice touch. Uh, it's not braided or anything. It's literally just uh, you know, uh, vinyl coated. It feels reasonably, uh, you know, heavy, but not uh, not the highest quality cable I've ever seen. Probably about three feet long. Not even going to take it out of the plastic. Uh, but then also they have furnished us with a a USB Type C to USB Type C cable, uh, which of course USB Type C is a more modern connector, and many motherboards these days are shipping with uh, Type-C ports, at least one, sometimes two. Uh, but, uh, and many cases also have a Type-C on the, on the front, but um, it's certainly not uh, ubiquitous yet, and it's certainly much more common to see uh, USB Type-A ports on PCs, but anyway, it's interesting that they decided to include both types of cable, and it's it's welcome, you know, it's certainly not a, not a detriment. All right, let's pull this thing out here. So here is the Fusion. What a design it is. Isn't she a beaut? <laughs> uh, really, I, I understand that this design is not going to be for everyone. Um, it is definitely aimed at those who admire or appreciate a retro aesthetic. Uh, but I love it. I think it looks so good. Um, these sort of lines up here, this big chunky top bezel uh, with the, the Durgod logo and then this big honking switch over here, guys. Look at the switch. Is, uh, is very reminiscent of um, the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, or even going further back, like uh, Atari systems and things. Um, and really that is what they're going for here. Uh, it is available in three different colorways. This is the black, gray, and, and red one. Uh, but there's one that's kind of got, uh, like a, a yellowy accents, or like yellowy orange. 
And there's another one that's, I think, got blue on it. You can check it out on their Kickstarter, no doubt. Uh, they all look really sharp. Um, I th but this one won me over because the, the black and the red and the gray uh, just screams NES, right? Looks like a, a NES controller or something in terms of the color scheme. So um, I thought that would be a fun one to get in for review. Um, so let's, let's give it the old, uh, full, uh, inspection here. So the first thing that you probably notice, aside from the striking retro aesthetic, is that this is not a standard layout. No, this is a 65% layout. Um, and so we have basically a typical 60% up to here. Uh, and then we've got an extra row of nav cluster keys here with a dedicated delete, home, page up, a page down key. And then the bottom right corner here is a little different than your standard 60% too, in that it's uh, the alt function and control have all been squashed down into one U sized keys. And uh, the left sh or the right shift, pardon me, has also been shortened. Uh, to accommodate dedicated arrow keys. I have re reviewed uh, a couple of keyboards with similar layouts before, uh, and I, I like it a lot. I like this layout because it is compact, like a 60%, but it packs in some extra, uh, you know, very valuable functionality, specifically for me, the dedicated arrow keys and the delete key uh, are a big deal. But it does mean the keycap compatibility is not going to be great. It will be fairly poor unless you buy a set uh, with some extra, you know, special um, uh, mod or not modifiers, but additional caps to cover these kinds of layouts. Um, but looking at these keycaps, why would you ever want to replace them? They're beautiful. Uh, we'll pull one off in a moment to see if they're as thick as I hope they are, but just upon initial inspection, they look gorgeous. So, um, the case is all plastic. This is gray plastic. Uh, we've got these kind of beveled edges around the front with rounded corners. Bottom half is black. Around the top, obviously, we've got this beautifully big, chunky switch, which actually has the Dear God logo on it. It's very satisfying, a very solid click back and forth. Love that. Uh, when you turn it on, you can see uh, we've got an indicator light here. The three lock indicator lights are here. I assume when it blinks, that means it's trying to connect wirelessly or something. So off, presumably, is for wired mode. On is for wireless modes. And then we've got, as I was saying, this big chunky bezel up at the top with these horizontal lines, very reminiscent of retro-styled game consoles. And then in a shiny font over here, we've got Durgon. Dear God. Now, you might notice something. What's that? What's that? There's something hidden, <laughs> something secret about this logo. We'll take a look at it in a second, but first let's finish our, our uh, tour around here. We've got our USB type C port on the back. Other than that, not much to see. Uh, the case does have a natural slope to it, this sort of uh, maybe two or three degree incline, very gentle, not too much going on there. Let's take a look at the back. On the back here, we've got more or less what you'd expect. We've got some rubberized feet that prevent slippage. One, two, three, four, five six and then we've actually got a pair of flip out feet as well in case you want a little bit more angle to your typing experience 
Uh, we've got a QC pass check underneath that one, and the flip out feet do in fact have rubberized pads on them. And you know, that confers another few degrees of incline to the board. Um, other than that, not a lot going on in the back. We've just got a product sticker here. It says, Dear God. We've got a barcode and a serial and some certifications. And a model number and all that. Model number Fusion Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. And that's pretty much that. Got sort of this, this recessed area in the back here. Um, the back is this lightly textured matte black plastic. Uh, it is reasonably weighty, although maybe not quite as weighty uh, or dense as I would expect uh, for a wireless board, because um, as a wireless board, there's a battery in there, presumably, somewhere. Um, but I think maybe it, the sense of being slightly lighter than I expected, and maybe slightly more hollow also than I expected, is due to the fact that it is a, a bigger layout and a chunkier case than uh, a typical 60% board. Um, and so that allows a little more space in there for the components, um, and as such it doesn't feel quite as densely packed as, say, a, you know, a 60% uh, board with slim bezels, uh, you know, a wireless one. So, um, but it doesn't feel bad. The plastics feel of high quality. Um, very little flex, like there's a little bit you can see there, but not bad. No creakiness to it. That's a sign of quality in my experience. Uh, when you don't have creaky plastics, that's a good sign. Uh, so, uh, let's, oh, I promised you, promised you guys we'd see what was going on behind this logo. So let's see how this works. I think I can just press down on here, take this out. The logo, shiny Dear God logo, is just uh, on a piece of plastic. It's magnetic, and it just pops into place there. Behind the logo, we see something that is very hard to get out. I'm actually not sure how you're supposed to get this out. Maybe push down on it. There we go. We have our USB dongle for our 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, and it's spring-loaded in there. Push it in, stays in, push it, pops out. That allows us to, in theory, pull it out. There it is. Uh, it's just a little just a little slot in there. Uh, I love this solution. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small thing, but I love it. Uh, it's uh, attention to detail that I really appreciate. Uh, I've used many wireless boards in past, like the 2.4 gigahertz wireless varieties, uh, that don't have a socket for their, for their USB receiver, uh, which always seems crazy to me because they're so easy to lose. If you lose it, kind of screwed, right? So really glad this one has a receiver. This is also Durgod branded. You can see it on the end there, which I appreciate because sometimes you have multiple USB dongles plugged in or kicking around and you forget what product which one attaches to. So it's low profile, just a, you know, quarter inch or so uh, protrusion. So we can just pop that back in there, like so, and on goes the logo, hides it elegantly, really like that, that's fun. Okay, so uh, the caps, as you can see, are uh, wonderfully vivid, the red accents, uh, they look very sharp. These are uh, actually not OEM profile. They are Cherry profile, which is basically the same as OEM, but uh, is a bit shorter. It is a slightly lower profile cap than OEM. 
uh, OEM as the standard you get on, you know, most keyboards. So, uh, you know, a little bit interesting, a little bit different than usual with those lower profiles. Uh, because of the lower profile, they tend to look a little more angular from the side, you know. Um, they're kind of fun. Um, they are double shot PBT, I believe. Uh, fairly certain. But we'll, we'll take them off and check. Let's take a peek here. Uh, I know they're PBT. It's the double shot part that I was less certain about, but I'm fairly certain they are. Maybe they're die sub. Let's see. Nope, they're definitely double shot. So, from the top here, you can see the, uh, the legends are nice and crisp and sharp and white. Uh, around the back, you can see the double shot construction where it's made of two pieces of plastic, the colored piece and then the white piece, which forms both the uh, socket to receive the stem of the switch, but also comes through to produce the, the legends. And of course, double shot switches, or double shot, shot uh, caps, pardon me, uh, will never fade. Uh, they will never wear out. They are basically eternal. <laughs> they will last you forever. So that's good to see. In terms of thickness, uh, they're pretty good. Pretty good. Not the thickest caps I have ever seen, but enough that there is really no flex. There's no flex there. Very uh, firm. Um, and they feel of, of excellent quality. Uh, lightly textured, just as you would expect. Not nearly as rough as, say, the caps on the drop control keyboard, uh, but nor are they as smooth as something with, say, a, a UV coating. You know, they're just a nicely, nicely lightly textured PBT cap. Uh, so let's uh, we'll pull off the other corner here just to take a look. We'll look at the switch. We'll look at the. Um, the uh, back plate, or top plate, pardon me. So off come a couple arrow keys. Underneath you can see we have genuine Cherry MX switches. And of course, uh, because this board is not backlit, it uh, bucks the trend, and there's no backlighting on this board. Uh, but because of that, uh, these are just uh, solid, opaque top housings for the switches. They're not transparent. Um, and uh, you could, in theory, I, I would imagine, use... Um, uh, you, could, you could probably install LEDs on here, although I don't know if the PCB is wired for it, now that I think about it. But uh, they wouldn't be, you know, SMD LEDs anyway, if you, if you were to do that. Uh, also, because this is not hot swappable, uh, you know, you'd have to desolder everything. So, uh, yeah, don't get this if you want a backlit board. <laughs> it's not really what it's intended for. But these are your typical Cherry MX Browns. And as far as I know, this board is only available with Cherry MX switches, which, in my opinion, is a bit of a bummer because there are so many good switches out there these days. Cherry MX switches are good, you know, they're high quality, and the Browns are a nice tactile switch, but uh, there are better, <laughs> and often there are cheaper, uh, you know, certainly like a, a Gatoron Brown is a, a cheaper switch than a Cherry uh, Brown, but in my opinion is a superior tactile switch, smoother, but anyway. Uh, Dear God opted to go with Cherry, as they often do, um, and uh, yeah, it's hard to fault that. You know, they are uh, well-made switches, and also <laughs> they give this a bit more retro cachet in a way, because, uh, you know, Cherry mechanical switches are the original mechanical switches, so 
in the era that this keyboard is intended to evoke, you know, visually, uh, cherry switches would have been the ones that were available. So, um, let's take a quick look at the stabilizers before we move on here. Ooh, I like it. Not much rattle. Smooth, smooth action. Hmm, it's a little bit noisy, that one, but... The space bar specifically feels really nice. The others are fine, but a little more wiggle and noise than I'd like. Uh, let's just pop off the backspace key here and see see if we can see whether they're lubricated. Again, there's that double shot cap. Oh, and I did notice just now that uh, some of them... Ah, uh, yes, look at that. In fact, many of the keys have secondary functions pad printed, I would guess, on the side there. I don't think those are double shot secondary legends. They pretty much never are. I suspect they are pad printed, but uh, they won't wear out because they're not on the tops of the caps. They're on the sides, so you're never touching them. They're not subjected to finger oils and such. Uh, and taking a look here. Uh, yeah, it does look like, yes, yes, definitely. So uh, once again, we have a win here. The stabilizers are factory lubricated. You can probably see the wire in there, hopefully you can see, is looped, and the uh, stems are looped as well. So that is what's responsible for that nice smooth action. Not quite as quiet as I might have thought, but uh, it's like a, a metallic kind of sound to it, slightly, but no matter. Uh, that will all come out in the typing test when we get there, which uh, we will get to in just a moment. So, uh, the other thing, I guess, the uh, top plate, uh, I should have showed it before I took these off, but we were looking earlier, or before I put them back on, pardon me. Uh, but when you looked earlier, we could see that uh, it is a metallic top plate, probably steel. And I was curious. There's a bit of pinginess to it. The pinginess refers to that metallic sort of after sound. It's common on most boards. Most boards ping a little bit. Um, and, you know, it doesn't bother most people. But uh, it does lend it a bit more of a, a less solid feel, I guess. I find the pinginess sort of has that effect. But we'll see. We'll see how it sounds uh, in action at full speed when I'm uh, typing on it properly. So really, I think that's pretty much all there is to see here in terms of the physical design of this board. Uh, it is, like I said, a real looker, uh, lovely design. Uh, feels well made, solidly built, if perhaps a little less dense and heavy than I would have expected. Uh, but the caps look really, really nice. Uh, and uh, the factory lubrication of the stabilizers is always a good sign. So uh, the next thing we're going to be doing here, well, normally we look at the, the LED backlighting, but in the absence of LED backlighting, uh, I suppose we're going to move on to typing test and I have to check if there is software available for this board uh, yet or if there will be at all. I don't remember reading anything about configuration software in the, the marketing copy for this thing but uh, I will double check and if so then there will be a segment on the software right now <laughs> or in just a second. If not We'll just head straight to the typing test. What'll it be? You're about to find out.
And here we have the Durgod Fusion plugged in and ready to go. Uh, of course, this keyboard has no backlighting, so that's why you don't have the typical dark scene here with the backlight on. Uh, but hopefully this gives you a, a good idea of uh, what the board looks like in action. So because there's no backlighting for me to go over with you, I'm just going to show you quickly the uh, switching between the various you know, wired and wireless uh, functions on the board. So right now uh, we are in wired mode. You can see we are plugged in back here with the USB Type-C port. Uh, and you access the wired mode when it's plugged in uh, by going function R that sets it to wired mode. And you can see actually that the indicator light here, maybe you can see, flashed on and off very uh, briefly there. Uh, just to indicate that it was in fact, I guess, reconnecting in wired mode. Uh, so for the wireless modes, we have the two options, of course. We have uh, the um, wireless 2.4 gigahertz with the USB dongle. That's accessed by going function E. We'll do that in a second. And then you've got two Bluetooth connections over here on Q and W. So uh, let's start off by unplugging the board. There we go. So no longer plugged in. And uh, I can confirm that <laughs> uh, we're not getting any uh, connectivity by default. So the switch is currently in um, the off position. So off is to the left here. So if we were to go function E to turn on the wireless mode, nothing happens. So when the switch is to the left, the wireless antennas are off. That includes the Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz wireless. If we flip it to the right and we go function E, you can see that uh, the indicator light there lights up briefly, uh, and that's to show that it has uh, obtained the 2.4 gigahertz connection uh, from the USB dongle, which I have plugged into my PC right now. Um, it doesn't stay on, as you can see, because actually I believe that's, well, I think that's normally the battery charge light, I'm pretty sure. Um, but of course we're not plugged in, so we're not charging right now. When it's trying to find the uh, wireless USB connection, when you're first setting it up, um, that light flashes and, until it pairs, but it'll, it pairs automatically. It was very easy. All I had to do was plug the dongle into the computer, wait a few seconds, uh, turn on the board, switch it to the, the 2.4 gigahertz mode, uh, wait a few more seconds, and then it was paired. And ever since then, uh, as soon as I uh, turn it on, uh, we are good to go. We are paired. So, yes indeed, we are working. I know you can't see the screen right now, but trust me, it's working. Um, so, the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, as far as I can tell, is very speedy. I've not noticed any latency. I do not know what the polling rate is, but um, I think it might be a thousand hertz, which would be the same as the wired polling rate, uh, at least on the Kickstarter page. Uh, for this keyboard, it mentions that the polling rate is a thousand hertz, but I don't know if that is for wired only. But it feels very snappy. I haven't noticed any latency. Uh, I haven't noticed any connectivity issues. Uh, I've tested it in just around my office here, uh, and it seems to work just great. I haven't given it a, a, a very long distance test, you know, down the hallway or anything, but um, certainly within a reasonable uh, working distance, it seems to work great. Um, so then for Bluetooth, all you need to do is go function and then uh, press one of the two Bluetooth slots. I paired this previously with my PC. So if I go function Q, you see that light illuminates for a moment uh, to indicate that it's grabbing the Bluetooth connection. And now it should be connected via Bluetooth. So if I Absolutely. Uh, we are connected via Bluetooth. Now, I've not noticed any especially perceptible lag with the Bluetooth input either, um, but uh, there will always be a bit more latency 
uh, on a Bluetooth connection than the wired or the 2.4 gigahertz wireless. And if we flip the switch back to the left, nothing. It's not working anymore because it's turned off. We flip it back to the right, flashing, and there we go. It obtained the Bluetooth connection. And indeed it does work. So the wireless on here works really well. It's very uh, snappy. It connects uh, very quickly. The Bluetooth pairing did require me to enter uh, a pairing code um, and then just hit enter on the keyboard, but that worked very easily um, and quickly. But for the sake of interest, I'm just going to pair it to my phone right now. I haven't done that yet. So let's just see how this works. Let's turn on Bluetooth on the phone for starters. That would be a good first step. Okay, Bluetooth is on on my phone. And now we are going to uh, activate the other slot on here. I know you can't see the phone, but I'll show it to you in a second. So let's go function W. So I think now, there we are, we're in pairing mode for that slot. You can see that light flashing. So if we go over here and I refresh, there it is, Durgod Fusion is an available device. So I'm going to pair. And let's see how this works. Okay, so it gives me a pairing code again, which in this case is 862764. And then all I have to do is press enter on here. And we are connected. Very good. So now I will just fire open uh, Google Doc here, uh, and this is the same doc I used for testing the last uh, Bluetooth keyboard, so I don't know if you can see that, but hey, look at it, I'm typing, and it's appearing without much discernible latency. Maybe there's a tad, but really not much. Like, let's, let's go, let's press L, and you can watch to see when it appears. Maybe a tad. But anyway, there you have it. So, uh, and now we ought to be able to just go back to function Q, and we see the flashing here, and solid. And we are now paired back to the PC. Indeed we are. So uh, to be honest, I've mostly been using this in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, which we'll just activate there because it is a very low latency wireless mode. And uh, it's kind of nice not having to be plugged in. And I have to say the battery life on this is immense because there is no uh, backlighting or anything like that. It is... Uh, it lasts for, I think, 40 days is what it's rated for. Uh, so that's pretty darn good. Uh, I've been using it for the last, oh, I don't know, two weeks maybe? Week, week and a half, maybe two weeks, I don't know, a while anyway, uh, without plugging it in uh, in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. And it's been uh, trucking along like a champ. So, and I've been using that every day. So uh, ample battery life all the wireless connectivity seems to work as advertised. It is nice and snappy to connect and uh, seems quite reliable. So that's all a good story there. Uh, so obviously no backlighting to show you, uh, really no other secondary functions to show you. Uh, you know, all the F keys are up here on the number row. Um, we've got end, insert over here, secondary functions on delete and home. Uh, not a whole lot else to say about functionality. Now, you're probably wondering about software. And unfortunately, I cannot show you the software for this keyboard because this is a pre-production model and it's not, or an early run model, I guess, not pre-production, but it's not part of the mass production run. And uh, Drivo's Zeus uh, keyboard software does not support the Fusion yet. 
Now I have been informed by the Drivo representative that the final retail version, the mass produced version that will go out to Kickstarter backers and such, uh, will of course support the Drivo Zeus software, but uh, this one is not supported yet anyway. So I can't show it to you, unfortunately, but, uh, and I would li really like to be able to because um, of course, uh, you know, being able to remap things is very important. Obviously there's no backlighting to mess around with, but, um, for example, there is no, uh, print screen key, uh, on this keyboard by default. I use print screen quite a bit. Um, and so that's, that's a bit of a bummer for me. And presumably with, uh, um, dear gods, did I say Trevo before? I might have said Drivo. Uh, pardon me, I'm getting my D companies confused. Uh, Dear God, with Dear God's Zeus software, um, you can remap keys, um, but, uh, but I can't test that functionality. So uh, I don't like not being able to test functions of a keyboard because it means that I can't give you the full story, but that's just where we're at because this product is still uh, in the fairly, you know, um, earlier stages. So uh, what I can do though is a typing test. So why don't we get on with that? Let's give this thing a listen.
Okay, so we've had the opportunity to unbox the Duragod Fusion, to take a look at its various connectivity options, and to check out what it sounds like and looks like in action. Regrettably, as I mentioned, we're not able to check out the software configurability of the board because these early production models uh, don't support the Durgod Zeus software, but I am promised that the final production version will. So this would normally be the part where I would just share a little bit about my experiences using this board, but Honestly, it's a pretty straightforward product, and I think I've said what I needed to say, or I will say at least what I need to say in the pros and cons section where I run down what I liked and what I didn't like so much about this board. And that is precisely why I am positioned over on this side of the frame right now, because hey, guess what? We're about to talk about the pros, the things I really liked about the Durgod Fusion. The first is perhaps the most immediately obvious, and that is the gorgeous and unique retro aesthetic that this board has. I think Durgod absolutely nailed it when it comes to the way this board looks. It is reminiscent uh, of the 1980s sort of uh, console designs in all the best ways with the, the gorgeous colorway on the keycaps. Uh, as well as that nice sort of chunky bar up along the top that really does harken back to the boxy design of consoles like the NES without adding too much undue bulk to the keyboard itself. It still feels relatively compact. And that is the second thing I really like about this board is its compact and efficient 65% layout. I think this was a great choice on Durgod's part, and it's one of my favorite uh, layouts, actually. You don't see it very often, but I think something between a 60% and a 75% layout uh, is really kind of ideal for many people. You get uh, a lot of functionality packed into a fairly small frame, and because this is a wireless keyboard, it makes a lot of sense for it to be more compact. So uh, props to dear God for picking a really uh, functional and efficient layout that I really enjoyed. Uh, this is also a fairly well-made board. Despite the fact that it's mostly made out of plastic, it's well-built. And especially, I'd like to call out the quality keycaps. Um, they are cherry profile, which is actually fairly uncommon. OEM profile is much more uh, common, much more often seen on keyboards. Cherry profile is very similar, but a little bit shorter, and I think that that added to the snappy typing feel of this board. It's just really enjoyable to type on, and uh, the PBT uh, nice thick keycaps really do confer a feeling of quality to the board. Similarly, I was very happy to see the factory lubed stabilizers. This is something that I've pointed out in many reviews, but uh, I really do think it adds to a feeling of quality, and it indicates that the manufacturer is really thinking about the typing experience, and uh, especially with sort of enthusiasts in mind. Your average keyboard user probably doesn't know the difference between <laughs> what it feels like to type on a um, an unlubed stabilizer versus a lubricated stabilizer. Uh, at least they wouldn't know right away, but I bet you if you put the board in front of them, let them feel the difference between the two, they would immediately recognize that the lubed stabilizers just confer a much more smooth and a quality feel to the typing experience. So uh, anyway, you know, props to dear God for that. Uh, moving down the list here, I'm really impressed by the plethora of connectivity options on the Dear God Fusion, including the USB uh, Type-C wired functionality, the 2.4 GHz wireless functionality with included USB dongle, and the Bluetooth functionality. Uh, they all work great. It's really easy to hop from one to the other with just uh, the press of a couple of keys, uh, they all connect nice and quickly, so you're not waiting forever for the, you know, the Bluetooth to connect or, or whatever. Um, and I just appreciate 
having all those options. As a matter of fact, I use this board primarily in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, uh, simply because it's nice to not have to be plugged in. It's nice to have the flexibility to move your keyboard around on your desk a little bit if you want, or put it in your lap, or, or whatever. And on that note, I have to applaud Dear God for their awesome battery life on this board. It's got a big old battery in there. Uh, they claim that it lasts for 40 days. I can't back up that claim because I haven't even tested it for 40 days yet. But I, I can say that uh, it lasted for at least, I want to say about two weeks uh, that I had it unplugged and that I was using it in that 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. Uh, part of that lengthy battery life is due to the lack of backlighting, and that is something that's going to come up in a moment in the cons section. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it is nice that you can use it for that long without having to worry about plugging it in. Uh, and finally, I really just want to call out that really clever uh, and kind of cute little uh, USB dongle storage that uh, the board has hidden behind the Dirt God logo. It's a small thing, but I think it looks really slick and it's really nice. So uh, overall, uh, a really solid package that Dirt God is offering here. A solid package, though it may be, however, it is not perfect. And I certainly do have some cons to mention here. The first among them is maybe a little bit unfair, but uh, I just want to, you know, point out that this aesthetic, this retro aesthetic, may not be for everyone, and it does make this somewhat of a niche product, because you can certainly get other products with a more modern design, with a very comparable feature set, uh, something like um, the Drivo Blade Master Pro, for example, uh, has a much more modern gamery design, um, that some people may prefer, and also comes with both the 2.4 gigahertz wireless uh, USB connectivity and the Bluetooth uh, connectivity as well. So, um, yeah, the the retro design, retro aesthetic, may not be for everyone, and it probably will limit the audience of this keyboard to some degree. I also want to mention here that while the keyboard generally feels quite solid and well made, it is almost entirely made of plastic, and it does feel a bit lighter uh, and more hollow, I guess, than I might expect. Um, and it's, it would be nice if it incorporated more metal elements. For instance, if the top um, case perhaps was uh, was made of metal or something along those lines. Um, perhaps this is again to tie into the retro aesthetic. A lot of those classic 1980s um, products, like whether you're trying to evoke the NES or trying to evoke sort of classic keyboards, they were made with plastics, not with metal. So, you know, maybe it's part of the design element. Nonetheless, it would have been nice to see uh, the use of some slightly more premium materials on this keyboard. All right, those first two cons, you could argue, are maybe a little bit unfair because they're kind of more aesthetic and feel choices. They're a bit more subjective, I guess. But uh, one item that's not subjective is that this keyboard has no backlight. Uh, and in this day and age, it's kind of an expected thing. Now, your you know preferences may vary. I guess there is some subjectivity to this still. <laughs> some people just don't care about backlights. I myself, I'm uh, a touch typist generally, but even still, uh, you know, every once in a while you just get a little bit lost on the keyboard or you need to find a, a weird character that you don't normally use or something. And it's nice to just be able to flick your eyes down uh, and see the keyboard when you're working in a dark room, which I often do. My office, I usually keep pretty dim, pretty dark. Um, so... <laughs> Anyway, I just like to have the backlight as an option, uh, and uh, I find it to be an unfortunate omission on this board. Maybe it's something you don't care about. I know not everyone does, but me personally, I think at least the inclusion of a just a plain white backlight would have gone a long way to adding to the versatility of this board. 
Another thing that I was disappointed to see was that this board is available with Cherry switches only. Now, Cherry MX switches, don't get me wrong, are great switches. They're high quality. Uh, they're going to last you for a really darn long time. And they generally feel pretty good. They are, you know, the, the uh, granddaddy of uh, mechanical keyboard switches. But... The market has come a long way uh, since Cherry's patent on these switches ran out back in, I don't know, whatever, 2014 or something like that. Uh, and we've seen this proliferation of really interesting and exciting uh, keyboard switches from all kinds of manufacturers since then, many of which are, in my humble opinion, uh, actually more pleasant or interesting to type on than the old Cherry MX standbys. And it's just unfortunate that Durgod only offers this board with Cherry MX switches. It just means that you don't have a lot of variety to choose from. And because this board isn't hot swappable, you can't change those switches out without getting your hands dirty desoldering anyway. So a little bit disappointed that Durgod only offers Cherry switches on the Fusion. And finally, I'm a little bit put off by the pricing. Um, now, as I explained at the beginning of the video, this keyboard is currently in the Kickstarter phase, and if you back it at the early bird tier, uh, you can get it for 110 US dollars, which I think is a very fair price for this board right now. However, uh, the discount that they have labeled on that price implies that the MSRP after the Kickstarter is going to be 200 US dollars, and that is right out of the ballpark. That is craziness. Uh, I have my doubts that Durgod will actually charge that much for this board. I think maybe they're just trying to make you feel like you're getting a better deal with the Kickstarter early bird. But uh, yeah, $200 for this board is crazy. There's way better options uh, in that price range. And after all that, it's time for my verdict. What is my final word? under God's retrotastic fusion mechanical keyboard. Well, it's pretty clear that the Durgod Fusion has a goal. It is a keyboard with a goal, and that goal is to tickle your nostalgia bone and bring back fond memories of 1980s video game consoles uh, and chunky, thick 1980s keyboards. And in that regard, I think it succeeds mightily. This keyboard looks fantastic. I love the look of this keyboard. I think the colorway that you saw here looks really good. I think the other two colorways that are available as well look excellent. So um, in the looks department, it absolutely succeeds. It's also got some other really solid choices like uh, the Cherry Profile PBT keycaps, uh, quality Cherry switches, these kinds of things. And it does throw in some modern niceties as well. It's got a more modern, compact 65% layout, and of course it has a plethora of modern connectivity options, including wired via USB Type-C, wireless via 2.4 gigahertz USB receiver, and Bluetooth. So it doesn't lack those modern niceties. But I would argue that uh, Durgod doesn't go far enough with those modern niceties and um, those modern uh, uh, quality of life features, I suppose. And I think that holds this keyboard back a little bit. For example, there's no backlight, not even a fixed white one, uh, let alone RGB, which is kind of a standard expected feature on many keyboards these days. Uh, it's also only available with Cherry MX switches, which ignores the massive um, variety of awesome switches from other manufacturers out there these days. Uh, and overall, I just feel like they could have gone a little bit further. Like maybe they could have auto added uh, hot swap sockets, for example. Uh, which would lessen the blow of only being able to order it with the cherry switches. You'd be able to swap them out after the fact if you wanted. Right now, there's no way to do that unless you're willing to get your hands dirty desoldering those cherry switches. So I guess what I'm saying is that 
the Dear God fusion feels like a throwback in lots of awesome and intentional ways, but also in a few less awesome ways. Uh, at $200, which is the implied MSRP for this board after the Kickstarter is finished running, I really can't recommend it. I think $200 is way too much for this keyboard and the feature set that, is, that it offers. And I think that there are much better options at that price point that are much more feature rich. However, at the early bird price of $110 that uh, you can get it for at the time of recording via Der God's Kickstarter, uh, I think that is a much more reasonable price. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I really did enjoy my time with this board. Uh, it is a really fun, uh, compact, uh, well-made little board uh, with a great typing feel uh, and that gorgeous, lovely uh, retro aesthetic that really does uh, hit that nostalgia note just right. So if you were looking for a retro styled wireless keyboard that has lots of connectivity options, including 2.4 gigahertz uh, and Bluetooth, and you don't mind giving up some modern convenience features such as a backlight, then I think the Durgod Fusion is absolutely worth your consideration. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. Special thanks to Durgod for sending over the Fusion product sample that we took a look at here today. And I will remind you that the Kickstarter for the Fusion is live at the time of recording. I think it's got a few weeks left on it. So if you're watching this and you're interested in checking it out, click through on that link down below in the video description uh, and check it out. There's other gorgeous colorways. As I mentioned, there's three colorways to pick from. Uh, so take a look at that. And of course, uh, if you do get in on that Kickstarter, you get, you know, favorable um, early bird backer pricing and, and all that kind of stuff. So if this does interest you, uh, check out that board with the link down below. And of course, special thanks to each and every one of you for watching. I hope you found this informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, my friends.